The sacred geometry of Giza is so powerful. It speaks to the unified plan that sits there, and it's ignored by Egyptologists. That fact shows one of the great failings of Egyptologists. They have many, they have strengths as forensic scientists, but a weakness is their failure to acknowledge the sacred geometry that's there. But this sacred geometry is also misinterpreted often by alternatives who jump to the immediate conclusion that the Egyptians were too stupid to do this kind of sacred geometry. So this has to be evidence that this came from Atlantis or outer space or something. And that's not necessarily the right conclusion. So let's look at a piece of sacred geometry that I uh, recently discovered at Giza. So here's uh, P1 and P2, usually called G1 and G2. Uh, the Khufu and Khafre pyramids, the main two big giants that attract millions of people from all over the world. Okay, so here they are. So if you take a straight line between the exact center of the eastern part of Khafre, the second pyramid, to the exact center of the southern part of Khufu, the Great Pyramid, that line is exactly 100 tau royal cubits. Now tau is 2 pi. So it's basically pi, but it's 2 pi. Okay, so it's exactly 100 tau royal cubits. That's saying that in this line, you know, there's, there's, there's the idea of pi. Okay, now Ian Douglas, here's his web, one of his websites, does tremendous work at Giza. And he's a master of the uses of pi and phi all over the Giza Plateau. And I mention this because Ian told me that this is probably the single best use of tau on the Giza Plateau after I showed him I discovered it. So he knows about that. So it's a, it's a unique placement finding of tau on the Giza Plateau. And I'll give you an example of what Ian does. Okay, so here, here's, uh, you know, the King's Chamber, okay, and some of the famous, uh, you know, uh, geometric parts of it there, the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triangle in the King's Chamber. Okay, look at the formula that he came up with. This is the sum of the wall heights. So you take the wall heights, all the wall heights of the Great Pyramid, you sum them, and look what it gets. That That is a formula to me is more elegant than, than Euler's identity formula, which is called the most elegant formula. Look, you got these constants on the left, you know, Euler, pi, the plastic number, phi. And on the right, you've got the square roots of the first four prime numbers. And that's a that's a rough equality because it's as close as measurements can come. It's a practical equality, okay? So, but you don't want pi on both sides of an equation. Well, guess what? You can replace the pi over there with tau and just change the 4 to a 2. So this formula is an incredible formula. This is an example of the kind of work that Ian Douglas does. So again, that tells me that my, this use of tau is, is singular on Giza. Okay, so if you take the center point of that 100 tau royal cubit line, it would be 100 pi royal cubits. And I'm calling that a radius because, and thus a circle suggested, because this line has pi in its measure. You know, its measure is 100 times pi. Okay, so that's suggesting a radius or a circle. Okay, there it is. So that would be it right there. So it's 104.7 pi meters. All right. So if you move that circle or you form a vesicle with it so it's tangent to the, the north side and the west side of the two big pyramids there, um, you find that goes through right through Hemayunu's tomb. And so Hemayunu is the architect of the Great Pyramid. It seems there's something being suggested here in this circle. Because again, circles aren't apparent on the Giza Plateau. It's squares. It's, you know, it's square type geometry. But these circles are now being suggested. Now, I have discovered, if you've watched my programs before, the Hemayunu template, that 200 royal cubit square that's in the Great Pyramid. How do they get it? Well, uh, you know, this, this tells, for instance, that if you inscribe a circle on the inside of it, of course, the area will be basically a thousand times pi, 31415.9 royal cubits uh, squared. Okay. Now, how do, why, how, why is this the Hemayunu template? Well, that corner right there is defined by two of the boat pits on the eastern side of the Great Pyramid point directly to that point. Okay, this point right here is probably the single greatest physical mark on the Great Pyramid other than the gouge in the back and the entrance. That's the notch. It's called the notch. And then this is where the uh, King's Chamber South air shaft exits. And this is where the King's Chamber North air shafts exit. They're all on this template. 
So the, the, our, Hemiunu, the architect, is pointing out this square. But look, it's also a circle because you could inscribe and encircle in it. Okay, so if you put the Hemiunu template circle right there in the, in the center of uh, th this circle that, that we found through the 100 tau royal cubit line, then, you know, I didn't draw these perfectly, but, but you know, mathematically, seven of these Hemiunu templates fit perfectly inside that larger circle. And, you know, every one of them is an example of a sort of a square becoming a circle or a, a uh, you know, basically that, but a square becoming a circle. So that's incredible. From going from square to round, this is suggested in this geometry. Again, these circles aren't apparent. If you've watched, you've seen that I've discovered what I call the holy circle. So this, these circles are hidden and that what's hidden in earth and heaven? Well, heaven. We see earth. We don't see heaven directly. Any teacher works from the unknown, from the known to the unknown. You know, I would talk to my high school students sometimes about girlfriends in cars to teach more difficult concepts because they know about girls in cars or, you know, that kind of thing. So you work with what people know to what they don't know. So we know about the squares and stuff, but then hinted here is the things that aren't apparent, the circles, this is talking about how to get to the next life. The thing that the Egyptian society was fascinated with, mummies. Am I going to make it to the next life? Egypt has this remarkable ability, remarkable ability to, to affect you that way. Okay, so I hope you can come with me to Egypt in October. You know, there's the... the, the COVID restrictions are gone right now, both coming back to America, which used to be a hassle, and going to Egypt, which used to be a hassle. Those are gone. This is a uniquely good time to go. So, you know, the information will be in the description about how you can join me, but I really hope you can make it. I've had a lot of smaller groups during COVID, but in, intimate, and uh, this October tour appears to have all the markings that these other tours have had. And I'll mention, if you want to come early before the tour and do some exploring with me, which these Texas adventurers did in this picture, I'm game. Just talk to me about it. Egypt, the magic, the mystery. Come with me in October. Thanks for watching.